Let's take our Bibles to Zechariah chapter number 10. Zechariah chapter 10 is where we will uh, be this afternoon for the first service. And I do pray and, and reiterate everything Pastor just said, and that's I pray God speaks to your heart this week. You know, the, the, the crazy thing is this, and this is true. I, I never forget coming to a youth conference. I was actually in college. It was this youth conference, Mid-Atlantic. And I uh, came and I was in college, and uh, it was my first year in college. And, you know, it was just, you know, you're out of high school. You feel like it's not for you. You may come that way even though you're in high school. And you're just kind of here, you know, whatever. You're hoping you can go light the fireworks yourself. You know, maybe that's why you're here. You know, you got an ulterior motive. And I never forget sitting in that balcony right there. And when, when uh, the, the fellow got done preaching, the, the bu buddy of mine leaned over to me and he said, that was unbelievable. I said, what? He said, the sermon, man, that was on fire. He ripped, man. Oh, God. And he gave me a couple things that God spoke to him about. And, and I gave him the, oh, yeah, 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 it was. It was good, yeah. But I zoned out. I, to this day, don't know what that sermon was about. I didn't know at that moment. I sat in the very same room, three feet away from the guy beside me, and God touched him in a real way, and I missed out. And it isn't because God wasn't speaking. It's because I wasn't listening. And there's nothing special about this room, and there's nothing special about the hashtag MAYC13, and there's nothing special about if you just come to this conference, God's going to do all kind of things for you. No, 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 no. you got to listen. you got to tune your heart in. Because if you don't choose to respond to God's word, there's going to be no response given other than no and rejection. So open your heart. And every time that a man of God comes behind this pulpit to open his word, listen, the split sessions, whether in the guys or the girls' split session, listen to what God wants to speak to you about through his word. Zechariah chapter 10, verse number 5, the verse we've chosen for the theme for our youth conference this year is this. And they shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle, and they shall fight because the Lord is with them. And the riders and horses shall be confounded. I want to talk to you simply about this, this title, this sermon, just heroes. Heroes. All of us want to be a hero, right? How, how many remember growing up being a hero? Some of you dress up like, I'll, I'll just go ahead and get open and honest with you. You ready? Here was my, the, the one outfit that I absolutely loved. I was the Red Power Ranger. Not like for fake, for real. I was him. I had the outfit, I had the mask, I had the watch. How many ever, how many love Power Rangers? And see now, the, your generation, y'all got these crazy, like super galactic. Uh-uh. We were the original T-Rex Jason, the Red Power Ranger. I wanted my name to be Jason. I mean, I wanted to change it. I wanted to be him. All of us want to be superheroes. How many, who, who wouldn't want to fly, right? Who wouldn't want to run in from that side and not spray silly string, but legitimately shoot a web out of their wrist? That would be awesome. Why wouldn't that be awesome, right? We look at superheroes, and of course, that's a childish, immature thing. But the bottom line is, we all want to do something great. We do. There's nobody in this room that wants to flop and fail and be miserable all throughout life. Nobody. You, you've got some kind of goals. Now, they may not be spiritual, but you got something you want to do. you got, you got someone you want to become. you got an, an achievement that you want to see done in the next three, four, five, six years. Maybe it's a certain college or a certain degree or a certain job or a certain place of ministry or a certain family or a certain house. There's some kind of goal that you have. Hey, praise God for that. But in the world's eyes, in the world's standards, sometimes to be a hero for them, there's got to be some natural ability. This is going to come shocking to you, but... I would have never had a chance at being a professional athlete. I know. I, I, I didn't have a shot, right? I don't have the height. I don't have the body. I don't have the skills. And I'm white. So I'm done, right? <laughs> I'm done. That's it. I, I'm through. I've, I've got like horseback riding and uh, rugby. That's all I've got. And I don't, I'm not stupid enough to play rugby. So, so in the world's eyes, there's no way I could have been a hero. You're never going to see me on sports and on da-na-na, da-na-na, breaking any kind of records. So it's got to be something, a little bit of natural. Sure, those guys work hard, but there's a, there's a little bit. I didn't choose to be five foot ten and three quarters. You know what I'm saying? I take every little inch I can get. I, I didn't choose that. I love to be six four. So in the world's eyes, you know, there's some things I can't do. But you know, in God's eyes, that everybody in this room is on the same playing field. 
You don't have to be six foot four. You don't have to be able to bench press 315 pounds and rep it. You don't have to be, do all these unbelievable things. You don't have to be a public speaker. You don't have to be able to teach. The, see, there's so many ways that God can use you to be a superhero if you'll just let him. Amen. He wants you to be a hero. He's got a specific plan and path already laid out for you. Amen. But you've got to choose to get on it. Here in Zechariah 10, we read of mighty men. The word mighty means to do unbelievable acts, to be a warrior, to be a champion. And that's the kind of man that I want to be for God. I want to be a mighty man. I want to do something great, but it didn't just end with mighty men. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. What does the verse say? They were mighty and they fought. Why? Because the Lord was with them. See, this, this life isn't something you can live on your own. This isn't something you can come down to this altar and beg and pray and say, you know what, I'm just going to be determined this year to lose 15 pounds and read my Bible every day. It's not going to happen. You may read your Bible January 1, 2, and 3. Without God's help, you ain't going to do it. Without God's strength, you're not going to be in his will in 10 years. Without God's help, you're not going to make it. You're going to flop. You're going to fail. How can we be a hero? I want to look at three things. First of all, if you're going to be a hero for God, first of all, heroes know their enemy. Heroes know their enemy. I think far too often, we get distracted, don't we? We get off task. I took our youth group to play paintball. How many like to play paintball? I never forget the first time I ever went to play paintball. I was in seventh grade. Brother, Brother John was my youth pastor, God leading music. And uh, I was in seventh grade. I mean, I couldn't have been more than 100 pounds. I mean, I was a tiny little pipsqueak. You know that guy in the youth group? You know what I'm talking about? That small little runt that like, took forever to grow? That was me. So I'm that guy. And I remember, I remember going to play paintball. You got that mask on. First of all, it's rental equipment. How many of you ever use rental paintball equipment? You shoot it the first time, it's like, Tew. Yeah, okay, I got to aim more left. You shoot it the next time, like, <laughs> you know, it goes the other way. So I just figured, you know what? I got this mask. I can't see. I'm going to go to the base and hide. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm like, I'm like in the base, like, dear God, please let the shoot activity just be over. I don't want to get hit with this paintball. I got no desires. I'm hiding over here. Nobody told me to capture a flag. The other team was coming to our base. Nobody told me that our team was terrible and they'd get overrun. And I'm, pop, 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 pop. okay, I, you know, I quit. I quit. I took our youth group to play because now it's time for payback. You understand what youth pastors do. We pay back what was done to us. So I, I take, our, I take our, some of our guys. A couple years ago, we went uh, this time and we went to play paintball. And we played on this course. They had a speedball course. If you don't know what speedball is, it's, a, it's, it's paintball, but it's on a controlled field. You're not in the woods. You're not hiding behind some tree stump that got turned over way back in Hurricane Fran. You know, you, you're, you're on this enclosed uh, field. It's about, it's about the half the size of a football field. So from the zero to 50 yard, and about that width, that's about the size it is. So you got one team on this side. You're just standing there. Other team on that side. And, and when they blow the whistle, you just like, I mean, you feel like you're at Armageddon. It's like, all the little paintballs come at you because they can about make it that far. Everybody's just unloading. And then they got inflatables that you hide behind, like little slides, but they're not. They're shapes, little, little squares and circles. And there's inflatable little, little, little things to hide by, defense mechanisms. So I'm, I'm, I'm all running because I'm, I'm not a 100-pound kid anymore. I'm not scared. Boom, I slide. I'm like up under my, I'm like up under my, I'm right here. Get that on Instagram. I'm like right here. I don't know why I did that. And so I'm, I'm all hiding, right? We're, I mean, the game ain't been going 10 seconds. So the goal is, to, the way you win is you knock out everybody on their team, right? Well, they, they can't, like, flank you, come behind you. It's, an, it's a, not that wide of a field. And I'm sitting there, i got my gun, peeking out, pop, 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 you know, trying to pick off all the little seventh graders on that team. But we have one of, remember that guy? That guy must be behind me. That little seventh grader. I call his name, but he's like an 11th grader now, and he's in this room. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, I'm like, ah, oh, my back. I'm like, my, why did I just get shot in the back? And I turn around, and that kid ain't seven, 10 feet behind me, laying into my back. And I, I just call him, I just call him uh, Larry. We don't have a Larry. Larry, what are you doing? I was about to go punch him in the face. <laughs> Take off his mask and ta 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 ta. I was supposed to be doing this to you now. Still getting picked on. Ta -ta, I'm like, what are you doing, Larry? He's like, oh, I thought you were on the other team. <laughs> we just started 10 seconds ago. Did you not see my nice slide behind this obstacle? 
thought I was on the other team. But you know what sometimes happens? We start fighting people on our team. Let me help you, young people. Your parents are on your team. Your youth pastor, he's on your team. Your youth pastor's wife, she's not just looking for things to, to critique and to get on. She's on your team. Your church is on your team. Your pastor is on your team. There's a godly group of men and women that have brought you to this conference. Hey, let me help you. They're on your team. Don't shoot them in the back. Don't try to stop them from helping you. Know your enemy. They're not the enemy. Who's the enemy? Satan's the enemy. Satan and all of his forces, all of his demons. And here's what he'd like to get you to do. He'd like for you to be that seventh grader, shooting on your own team. Because while he's shooting me, I can't be going after the rest of the enemy. I'm sidetracked. I was in pain, be honest, 10 feet away. I was sidetracked. Hey, get on their team. Let's start fighting the real enemy. Let's start fighting the devil. Let's start fighting what he's out in this world doing. Let's go out to the stats we saw as the conference opened. There's a generation of teenagers that are hurting. Hurting. They don't know where to turn because they don't have a conference like this. They don't have a family like some of you have. They don't have a church where they go. They've never, they may have heard the name Jesus used in a rap video, but they've never heard the name Jesus used as the Savior of the world. They don't know who he is. So, so why don't we all get on the same team and know our enemy and let's fight him. Let's fight him. Have we forgot what John 10 told us about Satan? That he's come but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. There's some of you in this room, you don't really, really believe that. You don't really believe it. Yeah, you'd say, if I ask you right now, hey, you right there, you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't live it. He hates you. He hates you. He'd love to see you do nothing more than waste your life. He don't really care if you become a felon. He don't really care if he can lock you up on death row. He just wants to see you waste your life. I didn't say that if you don't live for Jesus, you're going to be strung out on drugs in three years. That's fine if you do for him. He'd be fine with that. But he just wants you to waste your life. He just wants you to do nothing for Jesus. He wants you to be a bystander instead of a hero. But you can't be a hero if you don't know who you're fighting. We're fighting Satan. We're fighting his forces, his enemy, his, or his army. And if you don't believe that he has his sights on you, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. If you don't think that he ain't got somebody here right now trying to prevent you from listening to God's word the next three days, hey, you're fooled, friend. Somebody's pulled the blinders over your eyes. Know your enemy. You'll be a hero for God. Know your enemy. Second thing you got to do is you got to know your weapon. No hero would go into battle until the weapon's been proven, Right? Iron Man had to figure out his little suit before he goes and takes on the enemy. Batman had to figure out that that belt is unbelievable and everything comes out of it. And that's how he's, because Batman's got no powers. I don't know how he wins. He just has a really cool suit, a pretty sick car, right? Had to, they had to harness their power. You better know your weapon. Here's our weapon. You go to Ephesians 6, a lot of defense. We got a lot of armor. It's the only weapon we're given. It's the only weapon. Hey, right here, the sword of the Spirit. Do you know your weapon? Do you know it? I challenge you, if you don't know your weapon, first of all, you got to learn it. you got to learn the Bible. Not like a textbook. Not like, yeah, I can name all 66 books. Hey, that's great. I think that's good knowledge. But you need to learn the Bible. Because when you learn the Bible, you learn the God of the Bible. You learn the God that wants to have a relationship with you. You learn the God that sent his son to die for you. you got to know the weapon. you got to learn the weapon. Survey was done in America. Just some of these stats are general. Some of them might be Christians only. Over, 50, over 60% of American citizens can't name the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Only three in ten teenagers know why we celebrate Easter. Has anybody figured out why the bunny and the egg go together anyways, right? Two-thirds of Americans believe that there are few, if any, absolute principles that should direct our behavior. There's no right or wrong, Right? Feels good, do it. But you know why that's happened? Because we didn't learn the Bible. The Bible lays it out pretty clear. The Bible tells us. Plain as day. But we don't know the Bible. This will blow you mind. According to this survey, I didn't do the survey. It's a, it's a credited survey. One in five Christians denied Jesus' physical resurrection and believe he might have sinned. They don't know the book. 
They don't know the book. Finally, last stat, the majority of all, this was a separate category from evangelical. They did a born-again Christian category. So we're talking most of these people, saved people, born again. Of all, those, of all the ones they polled, surveyed, the majority, over 65%, read the Bible once a week or not at all. Over 65%? The one weapon we got and we ain't reading it? The one way we fight the devil and we don't know it? We, we, we wonder why we keep losing to the enemy. Because we're fighting with a knife and he's got a nuclear weapon. But this, this beats him every time. But you can't use the Bible if you don't know the Bible. You can't begin to quote scripture at him if you ain't never read it in the first place. You can't live principles that you haven't learned. you got to learn the Bible. And the bottom line is, we don't know it. We, I, I don't stand up here in front of you this morning or this afternoon saying, you know what, yeah, Brother Philip, he spent uh, 48 hours in the Bible. I didn't say I'm where I'm supposed to be. I wouldn't put myself on that kind of pedestal. But God helped me to learn the Bible. God helped me to spend time in the Bible and to know the Bible and to know the weapon that God's given me. Have you learned it? Not only do you learn it, do you love it? Know your weapon. You're going to have to love it. A man in Kansas City was severely injured in an explosion. Evangelist Robert Sumner tells the story. man was injured in an explosion in Kansas City, and his face was badly disfigured. Lost his eyesight, as well as the usage of both hands, or the feeling in both hands. He was a new Christian. He had just been saved weeks before. And when coming out of the, the coma, they had him in and, and had him gone through all the surgeries. He said his, at his bedside, his greatest disappointment wasn't the loss of his eyesight and the loss of the feeling in his hands and, and all the things that took place to his face, an explosion. So his greatest disappointment was that he found out he could no longer read the Bible. So because of this, he heard about a lady in England who learned to read Braille with her lips. She's in a similar situation, no eyesight and no feeling in her fingers. Much to his despair, had no feeling in his lips. Dedicated to learn Braille, then trace over the Bible with his lips just to read it, disappointed yet again. Till one day a thought hit him, this evangelist tells the story. He realized while he was eating, he had a feeling in his tongue. And this man trained himself, not only to learn Braille, but to read it with his tongue. And here's what I have to do to read the Bible. Open it, ask you of the Lord, rain of the time, of the latter of the rain, for the Lord. I just got to read. I got to learn Braille. I got to learn to read with my tongue. God's blessed me. And all I got to do is pick up a copy of the Word of God. But you know why we don't? We don't love it. It's an afterthought. We say, oh, man, I forgot my Bible. Oh, I got my iPhone, though. Yeah, I got, I got my version app for my Bible, you pastor. Yeah, I brought my Bible. No, you didn't. Thank God you text on it 24-7. Therefore, you had your Bible in church. I'm not against electronic devices in church. Here's what I'm saying. We don't love it enough to take it to church, much less read it. We don't spend time in the Bible. And it's not because you can't be passionate. Are you kidding me? Some of you got some brand new Call of Duty game, and you've done logged 100 hours since Christmas break. You've, you've been on that thing 24-7. Hey, good. Congratulations. Spend all the time you want to on Call of Duty, but let's not forget to read the Bible. Let's not forget to get in the book. Let's allow our love to increase and to grow for it. And the reason some of you don't like it is because you've never tried it. You've never tried it. Now, I'm not just an extremely picky eater. I've met pickier. But I am kind of picky. You know, it's all about the texture. How many with me on texture? It's not really the taste, you know. It's the texture. But you know what I found out sometimes? That I've liked a certain food, but I didn't like it until I tried it. And then once I tried it, Oh, that ain't half bad. Yes, that's pretty good. And that's what the Bible be for some of you. Some of you couldn't tell me the last time you just went seven days straight reading the Bible. Not missing seven days. Seven. What have you been doing on Christmas break? 
Thank God no school. Yeah, right? Sleep in. How about we read our Bible? But we don't love it. And we'll never, never be a hero for God until we know our weapon. You don't, you don't luck up and just all of a sudden the next day like, oh, yeah, I got bit by a spider and now I'm this awesome Christian. That don't happen. You don't wake up, had a dream last night, and yeah, man, now I'm going to go win the world for Christ. You ain't going to do it till you know the Bible. You got to learn it. You got to love it. And once you learn it and love it, then you got to start living it. Matthew chapter number four, Jesus goes through the temptation there in the desert. As he fights those temptations, he tells Satan over and over, it is written, it is written, it is written. And every time Satan said, try this, Jesus said, "Uh uh-uh, the Bible says, I can't do that. I said in the word of God this, and he was able to live out the Bible. And the promises of God were given to us to program our lives by them. It ought to be automatic. It ought to be a guarantee. As soon as I see something wrong, man, it's it's, it's an immediate flip of the channel. It's an immediate of closing the web page. You know why? Now I've been told I'll set no wicked thing before my eyes. But if you didn't know the Bible, you can't live the Bible. You can't live what you don't know. And God wants us to live it every day. How do we expect to be successful Christians if we can't live the Bible? If we can't do the basics? We, we can't do bottom line Christianity. There is no mediocrity. You're either on it or you're going away from it. You're reading the Bible, you're not. There is no, I can't, no, no. You either read it or you don't. You either live it or you don't. But when we don't live and don't read the Bible, that's when Satan comes in and tells us lies. That's when Satan slips in and says, hey, you're nothing anyways. That's when Satan steps in and says, hey, uh, you can't handle it anyways. You can't be good enough anyways. You're not the person for the job anyways. And lies start to creep in and this deception comes in. And Satan wins the battle because we didn't have a weapon. We didn't have a weapon. We had nothing to fight him off with. You got to know the book. You got to know the book. When Satan comes, hard times come, and Satan tries to get you off track and off the path spiritually just because something's come from nowhere. Hey, listen, Romans 8, 28, why don't you tell him that? Hey, Satan, all things work together for good to them that love God. You got to know the book. Because if you don't know the book, that's not going to come in the forefront of your mind. How about when you're feeling guilty for sins you've committed and maybe you messed up day after day and it may have been a week or a month and you felt like you failed God time and time again. Why don't you give Romans 8 to Satan and say, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Hey Satan, I'm not condemned anymore. I don't live like I want to live and do whatever I want to do. But when I mess up, I've got forgiveness from God. But you'll never ever tell him that if you don't know the book. If you don't know the book, hey, ladies, how about the next time Satan tries to tell you that your body image isn't what it's supposed to be, and he tries to get you down, and you doing all kinds of other things trying to get attention, why don't you tell him I'm fearfully and wonderfully made? Why don't you tell him God made me and God don't make junk? Why don't you give Satan that? But you won't give him that unless you know the book. When you feel powerless over your circumstances. Tell me Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. Hey Satan greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But you'll never overcome that struggle if you don't know the book. If you don't know the book. If you've not spent time in the weapon that God's given you. If you don't use the Bible in the fight. And you don't have a chance. You don't have a chance. This is your weapon. You want to be a hero, you got to know your enemy. You want to be a hero, you got to know your weapon. And lastly, I'm done. Third thing's this. Heroes always win. Heroes always win. You watch the movies. I mean, Rocky may have got hit like 18 times, but it didn't matter. He came back and won. He's a hero. You know what I'm saying? He's getting pain- pounded by this Russian, but it don't matter. He's a hero. Superman may get beat to death, but you guarantee you he's going to come back and win. Hey, let me tell you the end of the story. Heroes always win. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the winner. You're the victor. You don't lose in the end. That doesn't mean you don't ever sin. That don't mean you live perfect. 
but you don't lose. But what Satan wants to get you on that side trick is you're going to lose. You can't handle it. You can't do it. Hey, look, why don't you look at Satan and say, hey, look, I can't, but he can. I may fail, but the good thing is I won't ever hold God up anyways. He was always holding me up the whole time. And heroes always, always win. And there's no better way to live your life than the way God wants you to live it. There's no better path. There's no better plan. You honestly think you can come up with a better story for your life than the God who created the universe? You honestly think you can come up with a better plan than the almighty God did for you? You honestly think you can find somebody better to marry than who God's already got in line for you? You think you can already find a better job or a better career or a better ministry than what God wants you to do? No way. That's a, that's a mess up and a failure every time. Every time. Heroes know their enemy. Heroes know the weapon. Heroes always win. You're going to be a superhero for God or not? And not superhero like, hey, everybody applaud me. I know we could misconstrue that. Hey, no, yeah, 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 look at me, y'all. I'm the good guy in the youth group. No, 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 no. But I want to live my life in a way that makes an impact on this culture and generation. I'm tired of sitting back. I'm tired of seeing Christians push back. See, because here's what Jesus said. The gates of hell should not prevail against the church. You understand what a gate is, right? Gate's just a defense. The only offense he's got is when we sit back. But the gates can't hold us back. Not as with God with us. So why don't we join together with this one voice and say, God, I want to be a hero for you. I want to make a difference. I want to be a difference maker. I want to have an impact. Why? So that all men and all women everywhere can be pointed to you and you alone because you're the only way they can be saved. You're the only way they can have peace. And you're the only way they can have true joy in this life and the next. So let's be heroes for God. Heads bowed, eyes closed. No one looking around. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Quick time of invitation before we head into the next service. Do you know your enemy? Do you know the weapon? Have you you taken time to say, you know what, Satan is out against me. You know what, Brother Philip, as you preach, you know, I see the temptation. I fall to all the time. And yeah, he's won that battle over and over and over. Hey, do you know the Bible? Do you read it? Or is it nothing more than just something on the shelf or nothing more, something in your book bag, nothing more than it just kind of lays around the house? Do you know the Bible? No doubt. Many in here, we could join together and say, hey, look, God, I'm, I failed you in this one or that one, or both. And God, I want to start this conference out by saying I want to be a hero. God, you, you say to do it, I do it. You say to change, I'll change. You, you say listen up, hey, I'm going to listen up. God, you show. You guide. You direct. Lead me. I want to be a hero. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to ask you a couple questions. We're going to take time for invitation. And you say, you know, Brother Philip, as you preached, Holy Spirit of God spoke on the inside, convicted and showed that I've not been paying enough attention to the enemy or, or both. You know, I don't know the Bible either. I don't spend time in the Bible. I don't spend time in the Word. It's an afterthought. It's a rare day. I can be honest enough to say, Brother Philip, that's me. Would you pray that God would help me to spend time in the Word? Put your hand up. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I see hands all across the room. You put your hand down. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Anybody say, Brother Philip, you know, that's me. I, I, I don't, I've not been fighting the enemy. Man, I've been fighting mom and dad. I've been fighting youth pastor. I don't even know the weapon at all. Anybody else? That's me, Brother Phil. Would you pray that God would help me? I see your hands. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm going to pray. When I get done playing, we'll stand to our feet. And that's the time for you to come to this altar. You talk to God. You lay your heart out before him. He knows anyways. Confess. Get right. Get on the right path. Father, bless this invitation, please. Lord, please show us when we're wrong and how we need to be made right with you. Those that need to ask for forgiveness and repent of things they've been doing wrong with their life, God, give them the, the grace, the ability to do so right now. And help this conference get off to a great start with your spirit's power behind us. In Jesus' name I pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's stand to our feet. No one's looking around. You need to come to the altar. You come to the altar. 
You come. You pray. You can start out right and say, God, I, I want you to speak to me. God, I'm sorry I've not been in the Bible. God, I'm sorry I've been fighting the wrong people. God, I'm sorry that the, I, I've been looking at the wrong enemy. I was shooting my own team in the back. And that's how I got off the wrong path. That's how I got that. That's why my life's been spiraling out of control. Heads bowed, eyes closed. No one looking around. Many at the altar. Would you pray? Would you come? Heads bowed, eyes closed. You're praying right there in your seat. You're praying at this altar. God, help us. Be heroes. Heads bowed, eyes closed. But John sings a verse of invitation. Many are praying. I want to give them a chance to do so. Give them the opportunity. Maybe you still need to come. Maybe you still need to be the one to, to say, you know what, I, I want to I wanna obey God. I want to be a hero. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You take time to pray. Help us be heroes, God. Help us to be mighty men which tread down their enemies. Help us to be valiant. Warriors, champions. Help us go forward in the power of his might. Help us do great things through him. Because the Lord was with him. Because the Lord's with you. I'm still praying. You pray. You be open and honest with God. Father, I pray that you'd help those who have already made decisions. God, I pray that they'd cement those in you and in a, or in a spiritual uh, counselor or youth pastor, someone they can be uh, uh, applied to and someone that can keep them accountable. God, please bless this conference. Please bless the preaching of your word. We want to lift up Jesus Christ. We want him to be exalted. I pray there'd be many decisions made for you, for your glory. I pray we leave here and make a difference by being heroes for you. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen.